Pranams to all of our friends. We're continuing with our study and discussion of Sharanagati. I'm going to start a screen share here. Oh, can you make me a co-host, Suvasani? And it's going to be a quiet meeting today, as we mentioned. The Govinda Mela festival is taking place at our ashram in California. And many of our usual attendees are there. So, okay, we'll do the screen share. And share sound. And as usual, I don't remember where we are. <laughs> um, it's the Let's second see. song of, uh, you know, of this. Uh, oh, second. that's right. We moved on to the Bajana Lalasa. Lalasa. Yeah. Bajana Lalasa, hankering for service. And we did mention last week, right, this word Bajan. It's actually, I can't even pronounce it properly. So Suvasini can say it right. I can't get that BH sound. Um, it's a difficult word to translate into English. And we sometimes translate it as service, sometimes as worship. Um, there's, there's really, it's, it's more, I would say like loving, loving worship, loving, love, the love is also in their devotion, but it's also one thing that, um, is also a part of bhajan is that bhajan actually, strictly speaking, refers to something quite high, right? Like, I don't know if I could say that I can actually do bhajan. And and that's also being conveyed here, hankering for bhajan, right? I, I would say, like, I'm doing sadhana. You know, I, I couldn't say that I'm doing bhajan. Right? That's something. What do you think, Suvasini Didi? Would you agree with that usage? That we, we use that more for, like, higher level, uh, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, that, that is true on the, yeah. He, he is... Because we hear that, you know, the higher devotees, you know, they are engaged in bhajan, you know, like that. So, mm. so then. Mm. then like, it, like actual service, right? Actual service. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah this is like a good point. So Hankering for service. Yeah, <laughs> that, is, that is good. Yes. Yeah, it's actually, it's quite significant, isn't it? How Bhakti Vinod Thakur has phrased it. He's hankering for that. And I, I like to remember that incident. Um, we hear, because we hear, you, you know that story, of course, T, we hear how uh, there was someone who asked, you know, about the Goswamis of Vrindavan, like, why did they worship deities? You know, because there's a tendency to think of deity worship as something for, you know, lower level neophyte practitioners. And, you know, because there's, you know, there's um, so many rules, regulations, codes that are involved, right? And it, it's, it's good for like the beginner devotees. And so this one person asked Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, oh, why did why did Rupa and Sanatam, why did they worship deities? And why and you know why you know they're doing archan, you know, this regulated worship, scripturally based worship. And this devotee asked. And Sarasati Thakur said, they're not doing archan. They're doing direct bhajan. <laughs> that was his answer. Like that, this archan is like some, you know, it's like going through going through some practicing motions, and you know, but but they're not doing that, you know, following the codes that have been given in the scripture and and all the strict timings of things, and that's not what they're doing. You know, they're doing direct bhajan, direct service, like just like you're taking care of a person, right? That is the type of relationship they have with their lord. So, so yes, that we do tend to think of that word bhajan as applying to the higher level 
to rotate. And we hear different stories that take place in the Bajang Kutirs, right? The great Vaishnavas. <laughs> Bajang Kutirs, a small hut that they'll reside in, some small residence they'll reside in, and within which they will do their Bajang. And then, of course, Gorky Das Babaji Maharaj, he did his bhajan in a in a toilet at one time, right? <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> so we are bhajana lalasa, hankering for bhajan, hankering for service. And we and we listen to the recording of this first song. And we, I remember we also went through it now. Um, yes, yeah. And, and Suvasani pointed out that this song is based on the first verse of Upadesha Amrita, that's Vacho Vega Manasukhu Vega. So I remember that clearly. So we, so then we've come to the second song now, this section, is that right, Didi? Yes, yeah, correct. Okay, then let's uh let's listen to this song. We have this recording. We're fortunate to have. Here, Artara Sanjoya. Hori he Artara Sanjoya. विषय प्रयासे अनकाता प्रजलपोने अटवे संचय विषय प्रयासे अनकाता प्रजलपोने अनोयो धिकारो नियम अग्रहे असत संग संगठने अनोयो धिकारो नियम अग्रहे Ostiro Shidhante, Tohino Mojia, Horibok Tiro Ilodu. Ostiro Shidhante, Tohino Mojia, Horibok Tiro Ilodu. Eridae Matro. Parohing Shamada Potista Sato Taspuri. Baby, Doy Matta Parohing Shamada Potista Sato Taspuri. Esabo Agraho, Charite Nadinu, Apono Doshe Temori. Esabo Agraho, Charite Nadinu. Apunodoshi <laughs> Potito Pavono, Tomaro Povitro Nam. Amito Poti, Potito Pavon, Tomaro Povitro Nam. She Shamondo Dori, Tomara Jarone, She Shamondo Dori, Tomara Jarone, Sarano. Vimula bhajane usha bhukti te bishar 
शिमला में ध्वजधा हरि हे अथेर संचय विषय प्रयास आन कथा प्रजल्पने आन अधिकार नियम आग्रह असत संग संगठने Sorry. Sorry, I don't know what happened. <laughs> um, oh dear, clicked on something. Oh, okay, yeah. here. Okay, back now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Astira Siddhante Rahinu Majiya Hari Bhakti Raila Dure Ye Hridaya Matra Parahim Samadan Pratishta Satatas Pray. the translation o oh lord i have remained immersed in the defects of over accumulating wealth endeavoring for worldly ends tattling about topics unrelated to you acting in accordance with guidelines meant for others and disregarding guidelines meant for myself associating with non devotees and being fickle minded thus devotion to you has remained far away from me one day malice towards others pride desire for worldly prestige and insincerity flourish within my heart okay so this is a commentary here asat sanga sankatane associating with non devotees Asat Sangha, bad association is defined in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Matyadila. Asat Sangha Tyaha e Vaishnava Achar, Sri Sanghi ek asadu Krishna Bhakta Ar. Proper Vaishnava behavior is to reject bad association. There are two forms of bad association. the association of persons attached to the opposite sex and the association of persons who are not devotees of krishna he sab agraha chadite narino apana doshete mari janama vipala haila amar ekanaki ghari hari i have not been able to abandon any of these attachments i now die due to my own defects my birth has become useless oh lord what should i do now amit patit patit pavana tomar pavitra nam se sambandha dhari tomar charane charan lainu ham i am fallen your purifying name is the savior of the fallen embracing that relationship through my relationship with sri guru i have taken shelter at your feet so <clears throat> this song is based on the second verse of sri larupa goswami prabhu's sri upadesha amrita atyahara prayasascha prajalpo niyamagraha जन संगश्यलव्यंशति All right. Thank you, Didi. Well, um, any comments on that song, Didi? Yeah, it's quite heavy song. It's like yeah, yeah, and yeah. I just wanted to ask one thing: this about this niyamagraha. It's like you know this 
it says following guidelines meant for somebody and you no, know, not following the mm. guidelines meant for oneself. And mm. uh, it's also, um, is it also uh, the same word which is also used like, you know, following sometimes strictly the guidelines and sometimes very loose about it? You know, is that also? Yeah. The yeah, I mean, um, th this is kind of like a, a broader, um, the, what's put, it, it's the same, it's the same thing, but it's expressing it in a broader sense, I would say. Mm. Right. It's expressing, I, I suppose you could say, what is the essential point about Nyamagraha? Because, because actually it's, it's true, right, that persons at a certain level, it's good for them to follow the rules very strictly. But then at a certain point, once they've matured and understood more what is the real essence, then they should be ready to let them go a little bit, <laughs> right? Hmm. So it's not, it, it is more, It's I mean, it's an interesting angle on that phrase, isn't it? Hmm. That it's more about understanding what is appropriate for yourself at your own level. So, so yeah, it's interesting. And this, um, I wonder, I do wonder where it's coming from though. Is that how, I wouldn't make, is that how Shula Shidomar put it in his edition? I, I mean, I'd like to see the original Bengali edition of, of this Lagu Chandra So I wonder where that, was, if that was take is that if that was how Shula Shudamaraj precisely decided to render it there. So yeah. when we're going through um Upadeshamrita then then we may get some more insight into that. Right. Yeah. Also Bhakti no Thakur here, you know, he's expressing this helplessness, right? All these, you know, so many defects. Um mm -hmm. Here, the last song also, like, you know, we have those defects, but, you know, this is, he also says, I think, the earlier uh, verse, you know, I, I cannot, I cannot abandon them, you know, my, it's, I don't have the strength to do it. It's only by your mercy, you know, I'm just taking shelter of you. You hear the, he says about this name, it's the Lord's name. Okay, and yeah, yeah, I have not been able to abandon any of that attachments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we just um, recognize this, the, the defects, you know, the, and recognize this. So one thing is like these songs, you know, tell you the, these are the defects you know you, we, when we have the defects these are the defects you have and so and then we pray for the grace to you know the strength to come out of that yeah that's a very nice point that you made about helplessness and and that's the that's the positive side in all of this, right? That one perceives their own helplessness and which thereby moves them to take shelter of the Lord. <laughs> right. So it's quite a wonderful thing, actually. <laughs> quite a wonderful thing. And similarly, right, that's Kunti Devi's prayer, a similar idea. Let trouble come because then Krishna comes to help us. Mm. Then there is more need. We really need you <laughs> to be able to perceive our own dependence upon the Lord and utter helplessness without His grace. That is, that is real. That is real life, right? That is real mercy. To be able to perceive that that is reality that's grace so anything that's helping us right to realize that <laughs> and
anything that's moving us to call out for the Lord's shelter. That is a wonderful thing. That is our best friend. <laughs> I'm seeing here, actually, Shilish, that, that definition of Niyamagraha, that's actually in the song. Ana adhikar niyama agrahe, right? What is for really not for my adhikar, but for the adhikar of others, for the level of others, I'm accepting those rules. And then I'm I'm rejecting those which are appropriate for myself. So actually Bhaktivinoda Thakur is expressing it from that angle. It's an interesting angle, isn't it, on that expression? Mm -hmm. Agrahe, anya adhikana. And Shila Maharaj is also elaborating on it in his commentary here. You mm -hmm. see that in the work. So, prescriptions and prohibitions and accepting the prescriptions and prohibitions meant for those of other stages of spiritual advancement and rejecting the prescriptions and prohibitions meant for one's own stage of advancement. Yeah, interesting. And um, so we'll come to discuss this more. Um, this is, what was this, the fourth verse of Upadesha Mita? Second verse. Second. The second. Yeah, and, and, and it's also significant, and we'll talk about this more, right? But the first two song, two, two verses, sorry, of Upadesha Mita, they're, they're dealing with the negative side. And that's actually generally the, the model that we see, right? And Mahaprabhu also in the Shikshashtakam. In the first verse, in the first few lines, he's clearing away the negative side. And then the beautiful temple built. First you take a bath, and then you put on the beautiful dress. So, and this is also helping to avoid sahajism, right? Imitationism. That we are clearing the dirt, we are not conflating what is material and spiritual, but we're cleaning away what is the material side and then inviting that higher, that connection higher. Does anyone else want to add anything? Krishna and Jani Didi has also joined us. Hope you're managing with the heat there in Turkey, Didi. Well, um, should we move on to the next song? Anyone else want to add anything? I don't think I have anything else I want to say. <clears throat> Amito Patita Patita Pava. Very beautiful, isn't mm -hmm. that? I am fallen and you are the savior of the fallen. This is our natural relationship. <laughs> you, you must help me. You will help me. I have full faith. This is our natural constitutional position in relationship. I'm fallen, but there's hope because you are the savior. Tomara Pavitra Nama. Okay, then we can go on. So now we're, this is describing the third verse, which is starting on the positive side now, based on the third verse of Sri Upadesha Muta. So we can listen to that beautiful song. Let's find it here. Okay. Ana Bhimola 
प्रभातने भक्ति सदाचार गुण नईलयाथ भक्ति सदाचार कैमने भजीव तुमार चरण सारिया मायार साथ कैमने भजीव तुमार चरण सारिया मायार साथ गहरित आचारे रही लामी ना करु साधु संग So verses one to through enthusiasm for devotional practice. So these are six favorable qualities, qualities that are favorable. In the previous song, we heard of the six unfavorable qualities for devotional practice. And now we're hearing the six favorable. Enthusiasm for devotional practice, conviction in devotion, the wealth of perseverance and striving for prema, engagement in activities favorable to devotion, rejection of bad association, proper devotional behavior. I've never had these six qualities. <laughs> so starting out with this very humble attitude, right? <laughs> I don't, it's it's like, it sounds very positive, very upbeat. And then suddenly, oh, but I don't have them. I don't have this. <laughs> it reminds me of um, uh, the, 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 the structure of composition in uh, Shikshashtakam, right? In the first verse, Mahaprabhu is describing all these wonderful things that will come from the chanting of the holy name. And then the second verse is like, oh, but I don't have any of that. <laughs> I don't have any desire. You know, there's a hitch. There's a hitch. There's one catch. <laughs> and, and it's showing, right? What is the humble mood of the devotees? And this is the difference between someone who's just practicing in a ritualistic way and someone who's who actually has some real feeling because you can meet many persons like that right who are doing all the things and following all the practices wearing the dress but they don't have that inner mood and that and what is what is that what is the real wealth of the devotee is humility right humility is the real wealth of the vaishnava and and it is mentioned right if one can have all these wonderful qualities, but if they don't have humility, it's all spoiled. Right? And our Guru Dave would quote this expression, some Bengali expression: "One pot of urine 
in the pot of milk, once one drop of urine in a pot of milk, it's all spoiled, right? And comparing that drop of urine to pride, arrogance, right? That someone may have all good qualities, but if they have arrogance around about them, suddenly they're not attractive anymore, right? And I'm sure it's something we all experience, right? We, we meet someone or we hear about someone and then we're so impressed and inspired. And then we find some arrogance in all their good qualities and suddenly not attractive anymore, right? <laughs> not attractive anymore. So, so this is, this is the, this is something that we always try to keep in mind, right? That humility is the first quality actually. And if we don't have any, any good qualities in devotion, but we have humility, then we are on track, right? We will get those qualities. We are inviting the mercy of the Lord through our humility. But on the other hand, if we have so many apparently good qualities, but we don't have humility, then they're all useless. They're all useless. So this is also showing this, yeah, and this, you know, this song format is very nice because of this personal element, right? Bhakti you know, Thakur's, it, you know, like if we compare, for example, with Upadeh Shamrita, the style of Upadeh Shamrita's scripture, right? it is very short. It's only 11 verses, but it is the style of it is, you know, it is Sanskrit and it is in the style of a, of a serious scripture. But here, but these songs of Bhakti Nautaka, they're so accessible, right? They're so sweet and accessible because he, he's talking like, you know, like your uncle sitting in front of you, pouring his heart out not just stating the you know the scriptural advice but in from a very in a very personal way you know and showing the mood also right because upadeshamrita is, is telling us upadeshamrita stating these are the six qualities that are favorable for devotion but it's you're not it, it, it it's it's more like just telling you instead of but here we're being shown. Bhakti Vinod Thakur is telling us and showing us at the same time. Like, how will you carry these qualities? How will you carry these practices? What's the mood behind? Right? He's demonstrating that. This very. It's just like someone's diary, isn't it? <laughs> it's like your readings, and sometimes it's actually embarrassing. It's like, oh, this is painful to read. Bhakti Vinod Thakur is like just, like you know, you know, like. Like, you know, sometimes people use this expression, TMI, too much information. <laughs> Some of these songs, Dr. Tucker is like saying things that we would never, usually we wouldn't even admit to our own selves. What to speak of like publishing it in a songbook. And it's painful, you know, like Amara Jivan, Sada Papera, Tanahi Kopunyara Lesh, right? Purere Udbega, Dia Chije, you know, he, he, he's saying, my life is full of sin. There's not a trace of goodness in it. And then there's that line, right? That the unhappiness of others brings joy to me. And the joy of others brings me sadness. That's actually a human condition. But no one will confess to that. But Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he's just laying it all out. Laying it all out. Of course, we won't think that he actually has those qualities. But he's helping us to come to terms with our own condition. Right? He's helping us to say, okay, you know, some sometimes, you know, people, it's hard for them, it's hard for us to admit to ourselves what is our condition. But then if a friend comes along and says, Well, you know, I'm like this, say, oh, you're like that. Oh, then maybe it's okay to be like this. I'm just human, right? So Bhakti Nautaka is making it easier, easier for us to accept ourselves, right? To, to acknowledge, because you can, before you can really make progress, you have to first acknowledge where you, what you, your condition is right now, right? So Bhakti Nautaka is holding that mirror up and showing, oh, this is, this is actually your condition and it's okay, no problem. It's okay, you're human, no problem. Let's move forward from here, right? So it's actually so beautiful you know, what Bhakti Nautaka is doing in these songs. So sweet. And like, like, like I said, you know, like, like an uncle sitting with you, pouring his heart out. You know, that, that's, that's what it feels like when you're 
and showing us the real humble mood of the Vaishnava. Because someone could read Upadeshamritan and like kind of check off, oh yes, I have enthusiasm. Yes, I have conviction. Yes, I have perseverance. Yes, I'm following all the activities that are recommended. Yes, I'm rejecting bad association. Yes, I'm following proper devotional behavior. Yes, I'm a devotee, right? But they're lacking this mood, right? This mood of humility. And so Bhakti Vinod is showing that to us here, how the Vaishnava will carry these qualities, how they will always feel that they're lacking. That, that, is, that is the trademark of a real Vaishnava, that is a hallmark of a true Vaishnava. They always feel, oh, I don't have it. <laughs> I don't have it. There is this one talk of um, Shila Sridhar Maharaj where he, it's a really beautiful talk. I think it might have, some parts may have been included in um, Upada Shamrita. Um, but at the beginning of the talk, Shila Sridhar Maharaj, she said that sometimes Saraswati Thakur would show this mood of lamentation that, that he had no no attraction to the holy name. And, and he said he would say in this lamenting mood, oh, how many days have passed that we have not remembered the glories of the name? How many days have passed we have not remembered the holy name of Krishna? In the sad mood. And Srila Sridhar pointed out, actually his whole life was for the glorification of the name and for the propagation of the name. His every drop of blood, every drop of blood in his body, every breath in his body was for that, not for anything else other than that, spreading the movement of Harinam Sankirtan, that his whole life was for that. Kipaya Hari Kirtan Amurti Dhanam, right? Srila Sridhar Maharaj expresses that in, in, um, in uh, the Prabhupada Padmastavaka. He was the embodiment of Hari Kirtan. He was the Murti. He was the deity of Hari Kirtan. It, that's all he was. <laughs> and yet he had that feeling within himself. Oh, right? so many days have passed. I have not remembered the name. And, and then Mahaprabhu, of course, right? Na prema gandos di drapi me haro gandami so bhagya, right? that I don't even have a scent, I don't even have a fragrance <laughs> of devotion, of prema. I'm just like an insect carrying on my days uselessly. So that is, so these clues are given, right? These clues, we find these clues. <laughs> what, is the, what is the real line of progress? We're very fortunate we can, we can hear this mood in these songs of Bhakti Thakur. So I've never had these six qualities. Oh Lord, how shall I serve your feet and abandon the association of Maya? I have remained immersed in offensive behavior and never associated with sadhus. Yet I wear the garb of a sadhu and instruct others. This is a great trick of Maya. So he's describing this mood of hypocrisy, right? That may come upon us at times. We are instructing others or apparently showing ourselves in one way, but we are not truly following. In such a state, I will obtain only your unconditional mercy, O Lord. When will I prayerfully call out to you under the shelter of Shri Guru? Mm -hmm. This is very nice because actually this in this song, Bhakti Thakur is praying to pray. <laughs> it's like two times removed. He's saying like, I don't even have a real desire for your mercy. When will I really call out to you sincerely under the shelter of Guru? My only hope is your unconditional mercy because <laughs> I have no qualification. I can only depend on your uncon no strings attached, right? No expectations. 
In such a state, I will attain only your unconditional mercy, O Lord. When will I prayerfully call out to you under the shelter of Sri Guru? This song is based on the third verse of Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhu Sri Upada Shamrita. Utsaha nishtaya darya tat tat karma pravartana sangotya gat satovrite shadbir bhakti prasidyati. Devotion is nourished by these six qualities. One, enthusiasm. Two, conviction. Three, perseverance. Four, engaging in activities that satisfy the Lord and his devotees. Five, abandoning all bad association and wrong attachment. And six, following the behavior prescribed by pure devotees. And then this next song is describing the fifth verse. So it looks like he's going through, as Sivasini mentioned earlier, going through all these verses in connection. Um, well, I think I said everything I would want to say there. Bhakti Anukul, this is a nice phrase to remember, right? Bhakti Anukul, what is favorable to Bhakti? We're always trying to live by that, to follow that. Well, um, anyone else? If you ask me anything you'd like to add there? Uh, actually, this, what you said is really, you know, it strikes me very uh, you know, nicely now. It's, you know, whenever you read these verses like Upadesha Mata, they just state that these are the qualities, these are the things you want. But Bhakti, you know, it comes with like so much personal, you know, thing, you know, which is so nice. Actually, I used to think why it is now he's explaining the same thing because, you know, when you read this uh, Sikshashtaka prayers, right? He has so many songs based on Sikshashtaka, right? So, you know, and so many songs of Bhakti, you know, on the every verse, and he will. So, but this is very beautiful. Like you know, you know what you said, and I really like that. Is uh, some personal thing, you know, in and uh, which is uh, touching, you know, which touches our heart. It is not just statements of oh, these are the things you should do. This is the thing you should avoid, but so much things coming from the heart, which is very. You know, which is very nice. And uh, actually, um, also, I remember, you know, like this quality of humility, you know, this uh, in the great devotees, you know, how they, you know, uh, like, especially in the song, but, you know, Thakur, I don't have all these things. You know? It's so beautiful. Actually, I heard from Goswami Maharaj one time, um, he said, like, the higher devotees, they they think that they never have crossed this anatta nivriti, you know, they like uh, because in this um, order, like you know, adau shraddha, adau sadha samgal, and anatta nivriti, then nishta, and you know, all those things, you know, going higher. But uh, you know, this uh, they 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 feel that they haven't crossed that and the stage of anatta the unwanted things you know that that I remember like in Bhakti Thakur song it reminds me that point yeah very nice okay thank you for sharing that Subhas Singhidi very beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, this is really the value of going through these these um, writings repeatedly because something fresh always comes because it 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 just kind of hit me now going through like oh actually this is so beautiful because Bhakti we know is repeating exactly the same things but but you're also hearing his heart and mood behind that so and that um that's that's a nice story actually we I don't know if you you heard the full story but. We heard Srila Sridhamaraj, he tells, it was um, Professor Sanyal. Well, I, I never remember his devotional name. Somehow he's always referred to as Professor Sanyal. But it was it was when, as I remember, Srila Sridhamaraj had just recently joined the mission, the Gaudiya Mat. 
and someone asked Professor Sanyal, oh, you know, when when will we actually overcome all these things, these obstacles, these anartas? And, and Professor Sanyal said, oh, never. <laughs> and Shilu Shirubai heard that and he just recently joined and he was very puzzled and, you know, also a little discouraged. Like, what does he mean, never? And, no, we do hear, and he, and he mentioned, as I recall, Rupa Goswami gives this um, outline, right? In Bhakti Vrasamrita Sindhu, right? All the different stages that we'll move through. Like there are some stages after Anarti Nuriti, after purification. There are a number of higher stages. So Srila Maharaj was understandably puzzled. But then later on, you know, as time went by and he his conception developed, he understood that actually the true devotee will never feel <laughs> that they have overcome all these things, right? They may be at a high level of devotion, but they will always feel that they are lacking in some way. Right? And we hear Radha, Krishna, Mahaprabhu, you know, the, you know, their supreme lordships themselves, they are doubting themselves in some way, feeling their lack in some way, right? It is the nature of one who is, it is, it is characteristic of one who is touching upon the infinite. They're, they are really approaching the infinite. And so they, they will feel that uncertainty at least. Okay? There will be an element of uncertainty at least. I never heard that the story behind that, actually. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah should okay. pretty much tell that story, yeah. Okay, thank you. Very nice. <laughs> Yeah, I am um, actually, maybe I can read it. It was, uh, it's so beautiful. One of our God sisters, I'm going to find it on, on, uh, on Facebook. She, oh, I don't have it. I'm not logged in here. Um, well, maybe I can. Read. I have it on my phone. One of our god sisters, um, Gandharvika. She was. A, she's a Russian devotee, and she's had a very interesting life. She married into Ugandan royalty, Ugandan Africa, and but she wrote. Let me let me find this. She wrote. She's been writing these memoirs of her life. She had a lot of tragedy, actually. Her husband was assassinated and so on. But she's been writing these beautiful memoirs. And and she wrote this very nice um, comment about how, about Srila Govinda Maharaj, Srila Gurudev, and how she was saying how he, he was very comfortable saying, I don't know. <laughs> It was something that struck her. And, and actually, I, I never thought about it. But when I read in here how, she, how he would say that, it, I was like, oh, yeah, it's true. He would say that. I don't know. You know, sometimes someone would ask him some question. Um, I, you know, it would be like referring to, you know, not if something not like not on a spiritual matter. You know, he would be comfortable to just say, I don't know. Let me... Let me see. She wrote it very beautifully. Is this the right? Oh no, this is the right. Here it is. It's on um Facebook. Galina, that is her name, the Russian name. Um In the, in the realm of wisdom, my revered guru, Govinda Maharaj, possessed a daily gem that seemed to bring comfort and strength to many. I do not know. Among the endless questions about the fate of our world, the elusive quest for the universal peace or the eternal mysteries of parenting, his answer remains consist consistently modest. I do not know. And then she quotes some Nobel Prize laureate who, who 
who's done research into human behavior. And he, and he says, we have an unlimited ability to ignore our ignorance, you know, that we, there's a tendency to like the human nature, there's a tendency to be very confident. This is a Google translate of what she wrote. So it's not so perfect, but, but this idea, you know, that, that, that this, the strong human tendency is to be overconfident, right? About what we don't know. So this is, is, it's actually the nature of the, you see like only a great person can say that comfortably. I don't know, <laughs> you know, and, and be okay with that. I don't know. And I, I was thinking about that this morning, actually how Srila Govindamar, she, there were a few things he would say that were a few statements that he would say sometimes that were very simple. But there is so much behind them. And the, the one I was actually remembering this morning was, and he, he said it so often, is he would say, I am surprised. <laughs> Do you remember that, Subhashnidhi? So often he would say, like, all the time. And sometimes describing some simple thing. Like, like he, he didn't have, he didn't take anything for granted. He had a complete lack of cynicism right? And everything was always fresh for him. He was always amazed, you could say, like always seeing Krishna's living grace and play behind everything. Because there, there is this, there's this human tendency, right, to just kind of it's kind of like, oh yeah, I already know everything that's going to take place. Oh yeah, I knew that was going to happen. Oh yeah, nothing surprises me. You know, nothing's wonderful anymore, right? Or oh yeah, I knew that was going to go wrong or whatever, right? But it was like our Guru Day, he was expressing this perpetual surprise and joy. <laughs> like, oh, oh, Krishna is doing like this. You know? Oh, I'm surprised. Like it was fresh. There was a freshness. He was he was seeing life in a very, very fresh way. So to live in in amazement, like even in little things, like oh, the sun has risen today. How beautiful! Like think about it. Little moments in every day we don't appreciate. You know, oh, the sun. What a beautiful, wonderful thing. Right. It's like about being it's like being present, actually. Not living in the realm of our empiric senses or living in yesterday or tomorrow, but being present. Oh, this moment is magical. Right? There's a beautiful quote of Shula Shudamarsh where he it's in subjective evolution, where he says, actually, in every atom, there is wonder. Right. If we go to analyze a grain of sand. You know, we will be astonished. <laughs> we will be surprised. Oh, so every every particle in the environment is full of wonder, actually. But in mundane consciousness, we kind of just glaze over everything. You know, we're not actually present, right? Oh, this moment is wonderful. This moment is astonishing. Because Krishna is behind everything. Krishna's energy is behind everything. Not fully conscious. We are not fully conscious about that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's being unconscious. Right. So that's, yeah, and taking things, you know, we just take for granted things like that. It's like, a, so mm -hmm. not being conscious of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They are living yeah. in that very highly conscious state. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now they can, they express that way, you know, they, because they're very conscious about that. Mm. That's beautiful. That now that articulates it perfectly. That's what it comes down to, isn't it? Being being conscious, being aware. Right. That's exactly it. In one place, it, it struck me this one time, Shila he, he he said it like this: that lack of consciousness is our disease. Mm -hmm. Yes. Kind of disease, lack of consciousness. That's what we're living with. 
we're seeing like a very narrow view of reality, right? Tunnel, tunnel view of reality. It's e egocentric, right? Very limited. Maya means, right? Limited. That is measurement. That is one of the definitions of Maya. Measurements. Very tiny, limited, measured world. Or disconnected from the infinite. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, um, this is this is my favorite meeting, you know. It, it's I really like this meeting, <laughs> Wednesday meeting. It feels yes. more. Um, uh, yes, beautiful. It's very beautiful. Yeah, in this meeting, I don't. In my other meetings, I do. I feel more pressure, you know, like oh, questions <laughs> and answers, or oh, I have to, you know, go through Bhagavad Gita. And, but in this meeting, I just feel like, oh, we're just discussing the books of our gurus in a relaxed environment. And Suvasani Ji is here also. And it's a smaller group. And I don't feel pressure in this group. <laughs> very, very happy. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you for sharing, you know, beautiful points, actually. That's very nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all of your beautiful insights also. And, and thank you all for being present and participating. There's a message from Kitty, that beautiful and clarifying class. And thank you. And also, and the devotees giving their thunderbirds. Jai Shri Bhakti Sundar Kunda Dev Goswami Marjki Jai Shri Bhakti Raksha Shri Bhakti Goswami Jai All the assembled devotees and seer seekers ki Jai Jai Suvasana Jai Shri Harinam Saint Peter Jai Jai Gorpim Shaka Deepi Ki Jai Jai Thank you Dandavat Dandavat Thank you Bhakti Lalita Krishna Jani Kirti Da Axo and Suvasan TV, of course. See you all next time. <laughs> <laughs>